let's talk about axle fluids. I'm going to take us right back to how a car steers. And I know that's very elementary for a lot of people that are going to be listening to this. But I think it's really important that we build up from the very beginning. So let's look at a car and let's assume that the wheel speed is, or the wheel rotational speed is indicated by these tire marks. If, for example, I wanted to turn left, but the wheels were fixed together by a fixed shaft, then that's going to mean that one of the wheels is going to slip, right? Because in order to turn, what I really want is for the inside wheel to have a much lower rotational speed than the outside wheel. So to overcome that, we have built these things called differentials. Right? Everyone will probably be familiar with this. Now, there are many types of different differentials, right? You've got open, locked, torque vectoring, welded, limited slip, etc. For the purposes of this discussion, I'm going to talk about the differences between standard differentials and limited slip differentials, because from a lubricant perspective, that's probably where the biggest difference is. All right, so let's talk about kind of a standard differential. One of the key things to understand is that the torque, which is transmitted by an open differential, right, is always going to be equal at both wheels. So that's one thing to remember. The other thing to talk about, and we've talked about this in the past, is the hierarchy, right? So usually these are hypoid gears, right, which exhibit in the seriatim of different types of gearboxes or different types of gear teeth, a little bit more sliding than your straight cut spur gears, for example. And that's reflected in, for example, the API GL performance specifications, right? So if you look at API GL, you'll see that GL4 and GL5 are all designed around hypoid gears. Generally, they have a fair bit of EP in them, right? We've cut back a little bit on the EP so that we're not destroying yellow metals, but there is a still a certain amount of EP in these oils. Now, what's the limitation of an open differential? The limitation is when you get into not gnarly scenarios. These are scenarios that are encountered by people all over the world on a pretty regular basis. But let's say, for example, that the wheel, which is back right, encounters ice, right? Now, it is obviously going to have less traction than any of the other wheels. And for our purposes, we're just going to compare the back right to the back left. So what's going to happen? it is going to want to spin really fast. And in an open differential, the problem with this is that because the torque transfer to both of the wheels is equal, right? Remember, power is torque times rotational speed. So if it's rotating really fast and the torque is the same at both the wheels, it's basically gonna mean that the power transfer is all occurring to that wheel which is slipping. There is virtually no power transfer to the wheel at the back left. And it means in a rear wheel drive car, the car doesn't go anywhere. So that's the limitation of open gearing. So you can run into trouble in very specific scenarios. All right. What else can we tease out from the API designations? From GL4, axles equipped with limited slip differentials have additional frictional requirements that are normally defined by the axle manufacturer. So what that's telling us is that API GL4, as soon as you get into limited slip, and usually with the oils, it'll be indicated by an LS right after it. Uh, same thing goes for API GL5, right? Same kind of language. Requirements for axles equipped with limited slip differentials are normally defined by the axle manufacturer. And part of the reason is because there are a number of different ways that you can construct a limited slip differential and each of them has different frictional requirements, right? So now we are in this realm of, all right, we're going to have to go to the manufacturer, see what kind of frictional requirements they need and then design an oil around that. And that's why OEM requirements become much more important in limited slip diffs than they do in open diffs where typically you'll see an API GL4, GL5 lubricant. All right, so now let's take it a step further and let's talk about those limited slip diffs. So same thing, right? We have input power and input torque and it's now being transferred out to the wheels. However, we do in most circumstances have some kind of mechanism which can partially engage the side gears to the differential cage. So in this case, in this particular design, I think this is a ZF a limited slip diff, right? What we have is some friction plates which can partially engage the side gear to the actual cage which will enable power transfer 
to the wheel, which you know is not spinning, right? So in the case of that car that we talked about before, where we have one wheel which is spinning really fast, this is going to enable us to transfer power to that wheel which wasn't receiving any power. Now, from a, a lubricant standpoint, what does that mean? What kind of properties do we want to impart in the lubricant? It means a couple of things. Friction characteristics, right? In order for the clutch plates to engage correctly, we need a fluid which allows that kind of friction. So if the clutch plates are they're all metal, right? Then we need that specific friction. We want enhanced wear protection, right? Same thing, right? Because it's gears, we obviously want wear protection. We also want shear stability out of this. So these are the kind of things that we have to think about when we're going to limited slip differentials. Now, the one thing I will say about limited slip diffs is that sort of clutch plate mechanism is not the only way to design a limited slip diff. There are, for example, things like torsion differential, which operate on a more mechanical principle. Okay, now I'm not having to worry about the friction between clutch plates, right? Now I'm having to worry more about that metal to metal, and I'm having to worry about the gear tooth design. So that is a little bit different. Another example, right, of a limited slip diff is the kind of viscous, the viscous LSD. Now, this operates on a completely different principle entirely. The idea is, right, you have fluid, which is contained within the limited slip diff, and rather than clutch plates, what you're actually relying on is the fluid friction between the two plates. For example, in the case of the right wheel encountering ice, it's going to spin really quickly. Now, what happens? As it spins really quickly, the fluid is shearing between these two plates a lot. And what you want is something where the viscosity is going to increase greatly. And it's going to resist that flow and start transferring torque into the outer of the gearbox. And so in this instance, what we typically see is fluids which are silicon based, right? So they're not even mineral or standard sort of synthetics. They're actually silicon based. So that's an entirely different chemistry. They have really high viscosity indexes. So, in that instance, we, what we're going to see is something completely different. Again, remember, with differentials, we've got a number of different types. With the open differentials, typically it's like a standard GL4, GL5 type lubricant. And it's a fair bit easier to formulate for that because there are standard additive packages that are off the shelf. When we're talking about limited slip differentials or specialized differentials, generally what we're having to do is a custom formulation which aligns with OEM requirements.